Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so I will present a, a paper together with Sheva Tempano, as Joanna already um, introduced, and this is really a COVID pandemic project. So we started it in, in March uh, 2020, and we hope it's in good shape and would like to present our uh, results we have so far. So to motivate the paper a bit, I mean, in the last, um, last 15 years, basically half of the, the world uh, got connected through the internet through a mobile phone, which is a very rash movement. And I think the, the nature of this, this technology is very interesting because it basically now enables uh, border crossing communication. And um, this can have different you know, forms. Like first of all, it can have forms of direct contact with family, friends, but also in terms of maybe more relevant for migration to diasporas. And it allows uh, finding and searching information on social media uh, and through search engines. So I think there is two main pathways in which we expect this to, to have an effect on, on migration. And first of all, is that the cost of migration decreases. So how this looks like, it becomes easier for um, potential migrants uh, to basically acquire a visa or to find job opportunities um, so basically we think the cost of migration decreases. Second part of it, that not only the cost of migration decreases, but also the cost of acquiring information to find a suitable destination. Um, for example, to find uh, information about differences in living standards and local amenities. Um, so the issue we want to, okay, I have a small issue. The issue we want to, to get at is how this, this, this rollout of this technology affected um, uh, migration. And we will give evidence towards migration intentions, but it would be also very interesting to, to have some hint at um, what happens to actual migration. So this connects to, to, to several strands of literature. First of all, uh, determinants of migration and maybe more specifically migration intentions. Um, so there have been several papers that looked into the, the Gallup World Polls data we also use um, in how uh, intentions are shaped um, by potential earnings differences and um, networks of migrants in, in the networks of different uh, forms of migrants. And these migration intentions have been shown to correlate strongly to actual migration flows, bilateral migration flows, um, both between countries, but also over time. So. Um, increases in migration intentions predict subsequent increases in actual migration flows. So the second part of literature, which I think is already getting quite uh, extensive and big, is literature that looks in what are effects of, of internet on, on various factors. So I, I just lighted out a few papers here. Um, so some papers looked at what happens to employment. And, um, and so there's very, a very nice paper by Jordan Paulson, which looks at what happens to employment in in Africa, they find that um, employment increases. And there are several papers that look at these kind of beneficial effects of internet, but also the downside, namely some political effects. So there are some papers that have reported decreases in uh, voter turnout and uh, the Gurdjieff paper, Gurdjieff and co-author paper, which is most close to us in terms of methodology, which finds negative effects on government approval and confidence in fair elections. Um, and they suggest that there, the, the mechanism at work is that people um, get aware about um, problems with their government, such as corruption. So the third part of literature, which connects closely to ours, is the literature that looked in the relation between broadband internet and migration. And um, this paper that I, I referenced here, Pesando et al., they look at how um, basically broadband internet uh, uptake across countries affects migration aspirations over time. So they also use the Gallup World Poll, but they have very crude, um, where they have very crude information of internet uptake, which is quite endogenous because it's actual internet users of broadband connections. So what we do in this paper is basically we merge this Gallup World Polls, which I already mentioned, which is very nice representative data set of a big part of the, of the world population with very fine geographic data on 2G and 3G mobile coverage. So the answer that we try to, to answer is how do these desire and plans stated in the Gallup World Poll are affected by mobile internet coverage. So that's 3G technology. 
Can I just interrupt for a very clear uh, yes, sir. clarification? What, what's the, in, even in the literature, what's the difference between um, just the access to internet through the traditional ways, so like uh, wire, wire and connection and the introduction of like um, mobile data? Yes, thank like, you very much. Would you expect it to have a different? Um... Yes, so I, I, I think this is an interesting point and I will hopefully come to that. But um, so one major importance is of course social media. So most social media are accessed through, um, through mobile phones nowadays. Of course, it's a bit of the reverse reasoning, but um, we believe that the rollout of mobile internet really does change um, the, the way people use the internet but it might also increase the ease of use and that might, might also increase the time spent uh, on the internet, which also has some effects. I think we don't say too much about that in the paper, but I think this is an interesting distinction to make that mobile internet might be substantially different from, from broadband. Um, so we do several other things and we, we basically look at the heterogeneity of our facts using a data-driven method called causal first. I will explain a bit more about it later. Um, we look into several mechanisms and we present a case study where we actually uh, look at what happens to actual migration. So the preview of results, we find that an increase of you know, 10 percentage points in 3G coverage uh, leads to an increase in the desire to emigrate by around 0 0.3 percentage points. And to argue that this is, this is a substantial effect, around one fifth of all uh, respondents in Gallup say that they desire to migrate. Um, so if you go from zero to full 3G coverage, this adds another three percentage points. So the effect is not very large, but it does add some uh, to the, sh the stock of people desiring to migrate. So what we find in the other analysis is that, that we find that the results that we find are driven mostly by individuals in high income countries and individuals in above median, uh, with above median income in lower income countries. Um, and we, we suge find suggestive evidence that um, there is a decrease in information costs, um, which has several interesting implications, such as that it also might change uh, preferred destinations. And we also find in the case of Spain that uh, 3G internet access increased um, migration rates for, for Spanish nationals from Spain by around 10%. So, um, Today I will present a bit a small theoretical framework in which we, we basically you know, incorporate our main mechanisms and show what uh, effects we predict. Then I will talk a bit about the, the data uh, merging that we used. Then I will present these main results um, and we will explore the heterogeneity um, and we'll give some evidence about some mechanisms and present the case study. So first of all, the theoretical framework, it's a very basic setup in which there is two countries, a country zero, the home country, country one, country abroad, and each individual has an exogenous probability, theta, which is the same for all individuals to be mobile. And uh, an individual has potential earnings in a country K, so that's a home or the abroad country, uh, which is some coefficient factor multiplied by uh, a vector xj of individual characteristics such as gender, age, but also uh, the 3G coverage level um, in the given distance. So I, maybe I should clarify it. When I say 3G, I use that, uh, you know, um, uh, like, um, like synonymous to, to, to mobile internet. Um, I will show later also that, of course, we have data on 2G networks that changes on things. Um, so basically, uh, beta times XJ denotes potential earnings in country K. And we denote cost of migration in two terms, the deterministic component, which is a coefficient factor multiplied with this uh, characteristic factor, and some idiosyncratic term, which is, determined, uh, which is um, distributed by some PDF phi and a cumulative distribution function capital phi. And individuals have one choice to make, and the choice is to make, do I acquire information or not? And they can acquire information at a cost uh, of uh, alpha times xj. Um, and basically, based on this, we can, with this information, we can determine the condition whether it's optimal for um, an agent to invest in uh, information acquisition or not. And because we, we, the only stochastic component which is distributed over, um, over all individuals is this epsilon j. So basically, we can derive a probability 
um, um, the probability that someone acquires information, which does not mean that someone migrates, but he finds out whether this theta collapses to a zero or one, and the ones that uh, find that they are being mobile, they can actually migrate. So if we take the partial derivative of this expression to the to the 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 component of this um, characteristic factor x, which contains the 3G coverage levels, we find the following expression. Um, and this expression has uh, two multiplicative terms. The second term is just uh, the probability density function, so that's always positive. So what's interesting is to look at the first term. The first term, the first component is the, the effect of 3G coverage in the home country on earnings abroad. Well, that is zero because that probably doesn't have effect. The second term is the effect of 3G coverage in the home country on earnings in the home country, which may have an effect as some papers have shown. Um, and then there is one term related to the cost of information. So we expect this to be negative because um, more higher access to the internet, um, higher likelihood of access to the internet implies that uh, migration costs are lower. And in the second term, um, in this other term, alpha, this is the effect of 3G internet on uh, the cost of acquiring information, which is in our model a necessary step uh, towards migration. So basically, as long as this um, as this term is not uh, largely positive, the overall effect that we find here um, is negative. So in other words, our our, our framework uh, predicts that um, an increase in 3G coverage in mobile internet access um, increases also the share of population that um, is acquiring information and we we see this as synonymous to having a desire to emigrate. so those people are interested in migration and are acquiring information about uh, what could be a good destination for them and because in in our model basically a share theta of uh, of respondents actually find out that they can migrate we also find we also would predict a positive effect on actual migration and plans to migrate however because some people find out that they cannot migrate uh, this rate is of course lower. So that is our hypothesis too. So the data that we use, the main data set is the Gallup World Pulse, which uh, surveys around thousand people per country per year. And in this data, there is a subnational identifier, which ranges somewhere between five regions per countries to hundred regions per countries. So basically we, we, we can uh, pinpoint individuals in this data set fairly well. So the questions that are relevant to us are the following four questions. So there's, first of all, a question related to the desire to migrate, which very broadly asks and probes whether someone would like to migrate in case someone would have the opportunity without mentioning any time period. The second question is already much more concrete because it asks whether someone is actually planning to migrate uh, in the next 12 months. The third question is even more specific and it asks whether this person has already done any preparation for the move. Um, and um, please note behind brackets, you see that um, the time span that the time span of coverage of these questions is not the same for all questions. So that's a limitation of Gallup because they they threw out some of these interesting plans and preparations of migrate questions in recent years. And the fourth question uh, is a question that is somewhat different than. Uh, traditional migration aspiration intention question is a question that asks whether someone deems himself to be likely to actually uh, migrate in the upcoming 12 months. So here you see there is no um, geographical restriction. So this might be people that migrate that that uh, deem it likely to migrate uh, domestically, but also to migrate abroad. So here I show a map um, of of the world. So basically, you see almost all countries are colored in because Gallup surveys uh, people in around 150 countries. So this is the desire to emigrate, the average uh, rate of people answering positively to the desire to emigrate question across the world. And you see that there's quite some distinct geographic patterns. So basically rates of um, willingness to emigrate are very high in Sub-Saharan Africa, some South American countries, and are much lower in, um, in some Asian countries, for example. So then we go uh, further to uh, the levels in the later time periods in the data set, and we see some, some changes over time. 
So in the following graph, I show basically the change over time between the early and the late years. And I think we can note a few interesting patterns. So large increases in migration uh, desires in uh, a Middle East and North African countries. So Venezuela was not a surprise. Um, Southern Europe as well, and decrease in other regions like Northern Europe and some parts of Africa and Asia. So um, these, um, I, I just want to show how these migration intentions actually relate to, to actual migration. So the, the, the question on the planning to migrate, 2.7% uh, of individuals answer positively to that, which is around a factor of eight higher than actual emigration rates on average. Uh, so basically one in eight, um, one in eight uh, people stating that they desire to migrate will actually, uh, that are planning to migrate actually migrate. So the realization rate of, on these questions is still fairly low. However, um, correlations um, between these desires and plans to migrate and actual migration are fairly high. So in the following graph, you see exactly that. So basically on the x-axis in the left panel, you see uh, the log of the, the desired flow rate. So something I didn't tell. So Gallup, if someone says I'm desiring to migrate, Gallup also asks which country are you desiring to migrate? So basically using this information, you can construct bilateral um, migration flow rates. So predicted migration flow rates based on uh, whether someone says he desires to migrate to a certain country. Um, and basically, if we, we, if we correlate that to um, bilateral flow rates from, uh, so basically there's this yearly bilateral flow data to OECD countries, we find strong uh, correlation both for the desire to migrate and for the plans to migrate. So for the desire to migrate, um, the, this correlation is stronger. And I think the main reason is that because of the longer coverage of this variable. So it's covered over 10 years, while the right panel is only covered over uh, seven years. And the, the, the number of observations in the right panel get fairly low because only 3% of people actually plan to migrate. So then we merge. Sorry. Just interrupting you quickly. Do yeah. you have the same thing uh, separated by the early and the late period, whether the realization rate is similar uh, at the different uh, points? Uh, the so this graph does not directly show the realization rate, right? So basically, I mean, it's percentage change, so it's a bit harder to, to interpret, yeah. right? Because sure. um, No, I don't have this. Um, I think this could be, be interesting to look at. The issue is that this is uh, aggregated over the whole time period. Because if you don't aggregate over the whole time period, you have 100 respondents in a given uh, country year, then 3% of them uh, plans to migrate. So you have very little observation. So they go, oh, I, I think you will just see one big cloud. True, true, true. The only thing I had in mind was that maybe at the beginning, you know, like people answering to the those questions would answer differently than when they have internet and they're more aspired to go, but probably less, of, less fewer people are going to actually um, have this take the step to to leave the country, but yeah, I, 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 I think I, yeah. So I I will get to this uh, country, this origin destination level on that a bit okay. later. Um, okay. So then we use this the, the the data on mobile coverage from Collins Bartholomew Mobile Coverage Explorer, which basically collects um, very fine spatial data on uh, mobile network coverage. So that's two G, three G, and four G networks uh, over time. Um, so basically, this is a bit dependent on whether network operators basically supplied this information, which is not always the case, and it's also not the case for all countries. So that's why we have um, we have around 130 countries um, in scope here. So basically, we aggregate this up uh, using population maps. So we get population averaged um, 3G coverage level on this subnational district level that is supplied in uh, the Gallup World Poll. So as Jana already mentioned, I mean, mobile internet is the first experience uh, with the internet for some people. Uh, so for example, in parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, but for example, for Europe, I think that uh, from my own experience, I had internet before uh, I had a mobile phone even. Uh, so I think this is very distinct. And this is also a reason why we affect, uh, we, we expect our effects to be heterogeneous. So the resulting data set concerns around 600,000 people in 110 countries. And we have 
than this 3G data for a bit more than 2,000 subnational districts. So we have considerable variation within uh, countries as well. So here I show just the broad picture of this 3G coverage for all countries in the, in the data set of uh, the Collins. And basically the blue uh, coverage indicates the coverage in 2008, which was mostly centered in Central Europe, few cities in America um, and uh, Japan, where 3G was rolled out commercially for the first time. So basically um, the green dots denote the coverage um, uh, in 2018, and you see that coverage uh, expanded greatly across the world. You don't see it very well because in a lot of uh, countries that ha don't have full coverage have coverage in um, in bigger cities. Only. So, for example, the example of Ukraine you see here, it looks like there's not much coverage, but in the end, because all bigger cities are covered, around 35% of people re receive coverage. So, to show what variation we have, I basically show the level of uh, expansion between 2008 and 2018 uh, for all subnational districts. So all the little bins you see here are subnational districts as we have it. And we see that we have considerable variation. Uh, however, variation is mostly dominant in, in richer parts of the world. And for example, if you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, we have a few countries where we have uh, coverage, but most of this coverage took place in the later, uh, started only in the later, uh, time periods in our uh, in our panel. Um, so the empirical strategy we use is the following. So basically we have a continuous outcome um, and we use um, a staggered difference in differences with a continuous uh, treatment variable. So basically we run an outcome variable, which is uh, a question related to migration, aspiration or intentions on this district level 3G coverage. So this is all, this is yearly data. And uh, the unit of observation here is uh, an individual in Gallup. Um, so basically, this is a two-way fixed effects regression where we basically include uh, district level um, fixed effects and time level fixed effects. And because we are somewhat worried that um, 3G coverage uh, might relate to uh, other societal trends and trends in, in regional development, we also include a district level time period. We'll later see that results are not crucially hinge on that, but um, we, we believe that this is the right way to proceed to basically capture any unobserved trends, at, a linear trends at uh, the district level. So, so good to note, we don't observe every district in every year. So not every district is surveyed by Gallup every year, but we have a relatively well-balanced panel, meaning that at least 85% uh, of districts in our sample are at least um, interviewed for five years in this 11 year period. We have. So we use these Gallup weights to make um, responses, responses nationally representative because um, some demographic groups might be better targeted by Gallup. So they correct by that by supplying weights. And we control for uh, an extensive set of controls. here. So we use demographic variables on the individual level um, and um, their satisfaction with local amenities and importantly, uh, a measure for regional development, which is uh, an average income as calculated using uh, a Gallup question on, on, on income variance. So that's a variable that um, that varies on the district uh, district year uh, level. And we add several um, country level controls as well. So I mean, nope. so um, so we I want to quickly discuss what drives variation in, I think it's important to explain what drives variation in 3G coverage. So basically, I mean, in the end, it's a technology driven outroll. However, from the world maps and, and also from within country, checking within country maps, we see that more prosperous and more urban districts get treated earlier. So, I mean, however, there's various reasons to believe that there is um, exogenous factors at work that give us some exogenous variation, such as um, differences in regulation between countries. So in most countries, these 3G um, uh, frequencies had to be auctioned. Um, differences in geography, difference in population density, and maybe some favorship of certain regions of network operators. Um, we identify two more exogenous factors that we could exploit in instrumental variables design. First of all, uh, is pre-existing cell towers. So for example, if there is pre-existing infrastructure, 
it's much cheaper to roll out a 3G network. So if there's already 2G cell towers everywhere, um, we predict that um, 3G expansion will be quicker. Second thing is that uh, is also slightly related to, the, to that um, is uh, local incidents of lightning. So basically lightning just destroys uh, infrastructure, which might make it more expensive to roll out 3G uh, in a certain district of high lightning. So we try to address uh, this non-random uh, non -random variation in, in, in 3G coverage uh, by, by carefully uh, assessing. So we, don't, we want to make sure that uh, in terms of migration intentions and aspiration intentions, the districts that do receive cover, coverage earlier uh, do not uh, show different trends than districts that, that get coverage later or not at all. Uh, so first of all, we, we do that by looking at pre-trends um, before getting for districts before getting treated. And uh, as mentioned already, we control carefully for district level time trends and different ways of, of, of probing regional development. And we, we try to, to dispel all concerns about the endogeneity by using two, two distinct IVs, one based on pre-existing infrastructure and another based on the local incidence of lightning. So here are our main results. Um, and um, what you see here is basically the regression uh, that I showed before of the desire to migrate on 3G coverage in which we increasingly uh, enter the controls I have mentioned. And you see that across uh, columns, the effect is fairly stable, and uh, we find that um, that an increase um, uh, an increase uh, of one unit of 3G coverage, or going from no to full coverage, uh, leads to a three percentage point increase uh, in the desire to migrate. So this is the, what I already gave away. It's a relatively small effect, but uh, but still. Uh, Quite sizable. So I think if you look in these regressions, if you have the gender gap between men and women, this is approximately uh, five percentage points. So men are five percentage points more likely to to desire to migrate. Them. So the second outcome, uh, which I show here, is the question on planning to migrate. And here we also see uh, a positive and significant effect, but the effect is around a factor of three smaller, which uh, our theoretical framework. Uh, would uh, predict because not all of those people that actually uh, acquire information and desire to migrate actually convert that desire to actual migration. So um, we also would like to show some effects on some other outcomes and I, I will first explain a bit of the structure of the question. So I presented four questions first. I presented the desire to migrate, the plans to migrate and the preparation to migrate, which are all about um, international migration. And then there is a question that asks, um, do you deem it likely or unlikely uh, that you will migrate within the 12 months? So we believe that we can we can do better probe of um, these migration intentions by overlapping um, these questions. So here, uh, region one plus region three are all people that are preparing to migrate. However, only a subset of those actually say that they actually deem it likely that they will move away from the region where they live. So because, I mean, one to 2% are low rates, we believe that we can improve, uh, we can improve uh, upon the questions by overlapping these two questions. So we call this region one, the likely preparations to migrate, and we call the sum of this region one and region two as uh, the likely plans and preparations, to, preparations and plans to migrate. So, in the following table, we still use the same same uh, regression model. We basically first in in the first panel, we basically use an outcome any var variable, uh, any desire, plan, or likelihood to migrate. So that would concern all the people that are uh, in this colored part of this Venn diagram, uh, and we find uh, positive and significant. And then we look at these two smaller groups. And first, we look at these groups uh, one and two together. Uh, and then we look at uh, group one separately. And also here we find a positive and significant effect on these people that are likely pre planning and preparing to migrate and a positive and significant effect, but smaller for uh, those deeming it likely to, to migrate within the next 12 months and are preparing to emigrate within the next 12 months. So the last outcome that we show from this is basically um, the 
the outer section of these people that say that they are likely uh, to migrate but do not have any desire to migrate. So um, this captures this some somewhat captures local migration, and we find that there is no positive significant effect of this, which reassures us that basically we don't find any effect on um, we don't find any effect on local migration. So I, I think many of you have heard, of course, about the discussion about what is wrong with using these kind of two-way fixed regression. So several others have pointed out that when you use these kind of uh, regressions, you basically get a weird weighted average of uh, two by two uh, different dip treatment effects, which can overturn your conclusions. And this this depends a bit on the the the, the, the timing of the the treatment. Uh, and there is several authors that have proposed estimators that are robust to this because this weighted average problem is not there if you have homogeneous treatment effects that don't change over time. But as I already argued, it's very likely that our effects are uh, heterogeneous and there might also be some temporal, temporal effect where people adopt mo mobile phones and then later start planning to migrate. So treatment effects might vary might very well be dynamic over time. So uh, second thing that we, so we, we, we use this estimator by, by Duchess Martin and Dorothy. Second thing we can assess with these kind of estimators is basically this kind of event study plot where we look at, do we actually have pre-trends uh, pre and also how does, uh, how do treatments affect change three, four years after getting treated? Is that different from the first year after getting treated? So one drawback of these kind of methods is that because we have a continuous treatment, we need to discretize uh, the treatment and the threshold. So I'm willing to talk about this, the, the more details about this estimator uh, later, but I will just first present the results and if time is left, we can, we can discuss about it. So basically this estimator to get rid of problems of uh, treatment effect heterogeneity and dynamic effects, they basically uh, compare uh, pairwise different differences and differences uh, between units that first get treated and um, and units that are not yet treated. So there's not yet treated units don't carry any heterogeneous uh, or dynamic effects. So in the first panel here, we see what happens of all districts that get treated for the first time. So basically on average, we see that the first year of having non-zero 3G coverage, 3G coverage is around uh, thirty percent of population, and it slowly increases after. So, using this estimator, we also look at the desire to migrate, and here we see that we don't find effects for significant uh, pre-trends. So that is good news. So there's those units are not uh, substantially different from units uh, that uh, don't receive treatment yet or will not yet not receive three uh, G coverage, and we find that. Uh, treatment effects are also uh, positive in the periods thereafter. So one issue of interpretation here is because the treatment effects for three or four periods after getting treatment treatment have to originate from units that get first treated only uh, before 2014, which means that um, there is a difference in composition between these treatment effects. So basically, those later th those later estimates do not include units that um, receive treatment in later years. So we can say something using these estimators, but it's very hard to basically say something about, okay, what is the, the how, how do dynamic effects work out because you have this compositional difference. But nevertheless, with this estimator, we also find positive and significant treatment. Um, and in the later panel, we show the same, but then for plans to migrate, um, and we see there's something very interesting. Uh, we see that, that the treatment effects are, are close to zero in the first two periods uh, after getting treatment, but increase thereafter. So I think that could be interesting and that could be intuitive in a way that people first um, uh, acquire information, then get an idea whether they want to migrate uh, and then maybe plan to migrate thereafter. So then I will go into to the two instrumental variable strategies that we use. So I will point out one mostly because it's one that is slightly more credible and that is based on the lightning. So lightning is very plausible to be exogenous to, to 
to the formation of migration aspirations and tensions. So how it works is that lightning can damage uh, critical electronic infrastructure. So those base transceiver stations that, um, that are used for these 2G and 3G communication technologies. Um, and this is expensive if it gets broken. Um, however, um, there is the possibility to purchase this uh, power surge protection, which makes, uh, makes lightning damage much less. Um, however, this is costly. So because this is costly, we, we, we expect that regions that have high incidence of lightning uh, have uh, a lower rollout of 3G coverage. So how we use this, we use this, um, this, very, nice, um, this very nice lightning data from this WWLN network, which gives basically all lightning strikes uh, recorded on the whole world. So basically we can aggregate this up to the district level and then basically have uh, a measure of intensity. So how we build up our, our instrument is that we take the logarithm of this lightning intensity on the district level, and we interact it with uh, a linear time frame. And because richer districts can easily afford for this power surge protection, um, they are likely not affected. So we also interact this with um, three levels of uh, income on the regional level. Um, and because this instrument is on this is is on the the districts times year level, we cannot include those uh, these district level um, these district level time turns that we have a main specification. So we drop those and we include an extensive set of controls um, that acknowledge the fact that lightning might be very correlated to several uh, geographic factors. So we calculate averages over, over for example, uh, main, altitude, main, main elevation of the district and uh, the geography of the district, and we interact those with linear time frames. So here we find, here I will show the results. So basically, first, col first column is just the baseline result as we had it. Second column is the baseline result where we uh, remove those district level time trends and include those additional controls for, uh, geography interacted with the time trend. Um, and in, in the fourth column, we see basically our first stage. And basically, um, our, our instrument is threefold for three different, uh, uh, three different tercials of regional level uh, income before, um, before the, the sample, so in 2007. So and we find a positive and significant effect for uh, the poorest tercile of districts um, which we already expected because those districts um, cannot afford the cost to overcome uh, lightning damage. So our IV estimate um, can be seen in column three and, and our IV estimate is, is uh, bigger than our OLS estimates, which might suggest that um, we capture a higher local adverse treatment effects. Uh, and what might also be important is that this 3G coverage has quite a big measurement error and, and um, this might have deflated uh, the size of the results that we found. Um, I see that I'm, I'm already quite over time, so I, I will skip over uh, a few things. So basically, we do a second IV, which we basically um, use 2G uh, coverage in an earlier year, 2006, interact that with a linear time frame. So this basically also nests uh, the lightning instrument because um, high lightning districts have lower 2G coverage. Uh, in 2006, then uh, similar districts that do not. So uh, we capture we capture differences in in pre-existing infrastructure, and we see that this IV is is much stronger. So um, we do several robustness tests. So some of them I already showed, but we also do robustness tests related to different uh, different weighting using a, a panel of balanced districts, and for example, control for regional development um, by using this night lights data. So it's quite hard to compare uh, incomes over times in these districts using Gallup survey uh, income data. So we also show that our results are robust when using um, when using um, this uh, light lights data to probe for a district year uh, level um, regional development. So I want to quickly go into the mechanisms that we we suggest. Yes, we have uh, very few minutes, but yeah, to, to go over. Sorry, how much do I have? 
A couple of minutes, that's okay. it. Yeah, so I will go over the mechanism section and I will then conclude. So the, the, the predominant mechanism that we see is this decrease in information and migration costs. So what we already see, seen is that there's no effect on local migration, um, which suggests that, uh, which might be compatible with uh, information driving the channel on international migration because local migration information is probably already much better available in the absence of 3G internet. Then we show three more results. First of all, we show that there's no effect of 2G expansion. Um, so internet is actually driving the effect. And so 2G is not driving the effect, which allows for simple texting and calling, but not for internet access. Um, we show that the effect is driven by individuals that um, do not have a close network abroad. And the last one is that preferred destinations uh, become more active. So I will focus now on the last one for time reasons. Um, and that is this table. So basically using those desired destination in Gallup, we can basically aggregate um, and we can aggregate up to the level of origin destination level um, migration flows or better said um, desired migration flows and planned migration flows. So here is an outcome variable in the gravity model. We use those desired uh, migration flows and we basically regress that on 3G coverage and in the later columns, we also include 3G coverage interacted with the stock of migrants from certain origin destination. And so as expected in column one, we see that 3G increases, um, increases uh, these bilateral, flow, bilateral desired flows. Um, however, uh, these mostly decrease in districts with low, uh, low level of pre-existing diaspora. Uh, so basically, I think this is very interesting because this shows that um, these desired destination that people indicate in the Gallup World Poll change from uh, change from countries that they are well connected to to lesser connected countries. And I think this has interesting implications uh, because as migration patterns might change, this might have interesting effects. I mean, there's a, a big literature which looks at what are the effects of diversity of migrants on top of uh, the level of stock of migrants. Um, I will quickly skip over to one more thing that we that we did, and that is um, showing the heterogeneity in the in the effect size. So basically, we use a novel approach, causal forest approach, which basically is a nice non-parametric way to to find treatment effect heterogeneity. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, this allows to calculate uh, an object called conditional average treatment effect, which is basically um, uh, a, a functional relationship of how your covariates uh, shape your treatment effect. So we find that in this algorithm, uh, uh, personal income levels and income levels at the country level, so GDP per capita, uh, strongly predict treatment effect at um, And that can be seen best in, in this figure. So on the x-axis, you see the level of GDP per capita. And uh, on the y-axis, you see the household per capita income. So that's a personal level variable. And we see that in the color scale, we see these conditional average treatment effects. And we see that conditional average treatment effects are the biggest in high income countries, but also in uh, higher income individuals, in low, low income countries. So there's, there's considerable amount of treatment effect heterogeneity, and I think this is interesting. So I will now wrap up. So we did one more case study. We did one case study where we look at actual migration in Spain which we could uh, nicely match on the municipal level to, to the 3G coverage data, where we actually find that um, expansion of 3G networks actually increased um, emigration rates of Spanish nationals abroad. Um, I just wanted to mention that if you have more questions about it, you can uh, ask for later. So to conclude, we find um, a positive effect of the 3G rollout that has been going on over the previous uh, 10 years across the world uh, on aspirations and intentions to migrate. Um, and we also show that this is effect in this very specific case study on actual migration. Um, and what we suggest is that uh, a channel um, uh, of decreasing information and migration costs is the dominant channel. And I think in, in the future, we would like to see whether we can disentangle it because if you go beyond them, simple framework, theoretical framework that we show, you could also argue 
that, for example, a continuous flow of information might increase uh, the option cost of waiting uh, to migrate, which actually might have a negative effect on on actual migration. So it will be interesting to see to, to see this expanded, and it would be nice if we can find more evidence of how mobile internet coverage and internet coverage in general um, affects actual migration. So I uh, thank you very much for your attention, and well, I'm looking forward to uh, to the comments. Youp, thank you, thank you very much for for this nice presentation. So um, let me just uh, start with with Narcis. Um, Narcis, I will allow you to 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 speak to ask the question. So this was a question about the um, about the theory. So I mean, you you went a bit fast on this, and uh, Panu also answered. Uh, the question in the q a but um, we'll start with that narcissus can you can you speak yeah uh yes can you hear me yeah perfect yes okay oh uh, thanks for your nice presentation i really enjoy it i simply have a a question uh on your theoretical framework yeah of course i have already yeah. exchanged some words with your co-author but i was still wondering because you are basically assuming that the probability to move is exogenous, but what you are testing is what does internet, how does internet coverage affect the intention of people to move? And what you do is uh, one or two steps uh, later is that you have shown that there is a strong positive correlation between, yeah, between the, the, the intention to move and the mm -hmm. actual, uh, and what we observe in, in data as being the realization of uh, bilateral moving of people. So if the intention to move react uh, to internet coverage, and that the intention to, to move itself, uh, then the, sorry, the realization of migration also react to the intention, we should expect that uh, internet coverage should affect the, the reprobability of people to move. So uh, my guess is that keeping it um, exogenous prevents you from having some nice channel that you can explore. Yes, uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I think this is interesting. And, and I, I think, I mean, of course, when you want to, to, to endogenize, um, endogenize the probability that someone is likely to migration i think it's it's hard to 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 make any statements about how uh internet access might might change that i mean and i mean we make quite a, a strong assumption by assuming that um first of all that this probability is exogenous and second of all um that we equate uh information acquisition to to desire to migrate so you could also argue maybe planning to migrate comes closer to information acquisition i think that's also some yeah, an issue of the incompatibility of such an intuitive framework to 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 the actual questions people are being asked and how they interpret them yeah okay then um simon i think you have you have a question uh, i think you can you can unmute yourself directly right if I'm not wrong. Yes, no. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay, then uh, I switch to Hannah and we will come back to Simon if. Uh, if... Um, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks, you for the interesting talk. Um, I was wondering whether you could make your empirical strategy or the first stage even more credible by using, for example, um, Google data, so Google searches. So what I was wondering is um, whether um, you could somehow measure, um, I don't know, searches for migration or migration to Europe or migration to the US um, in these countries. I guess that would be difficult given, uh, yeah, the vast variety in languages, but um, I think it could be really interesting whether that correlates with uh, the three G um, coverage. So, if I understand you correctly, I, I'm not sure what what you mean with in the first stage. Do you mean in the IV, or do you mean just more generally to show that three G has an effect in uptake of internet? 
Right, just more generally, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I think I think this is interesting. I think, I mean, it would be relatively data intensive. Um, so there is a question in Gallup, which also asks about internet access. Um, however, this question is a bit odd because it's discontinuous in a certain year. So before 2015, it explicitly asks, do you have internet access at home? And people respond. So the effect of 3G on positive response to that question is there, but it's relatively small. So, for example, uh, going from zero to one coverage in in uh, in three G only makes people's around two or three percentage points more likely to answer positively to the question because a lot of people interpret this question as um, at home uh, internet, which they might equate to broadband internet. So that's a bit of an issue. But yeah, I think we can show that it has an effect on on internet uptake. Thanks. Okay, then Simon, I can see I can see you. So I think it works. Okay, now. I'll try again. Yes, yeah, hello, thanks. It sounds good. Thanks. Uh, no, very nice talk. Thanks. Um, I was waiting a little bit uh, throughout the talk for the re results that you showed towards the end on the destination choice. So given the way you motivate the paper on it being an information channel, I think that's really something to look into more. So how the destinations uh, people want to go to change. Um, I mean, the the pre-existing network, I mean, that's a nice one, but also, um, you know, do, do they make better informed choices in the sense of what their income gains would be um, in the destination that they shift to? So I think there's, um, oh. yeah, a, lo a lot of margins on that question to look oh. into. I think that would... Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is interesting. And, and of course, you, you enter a bit of a, a curse of dimensionality when you do that, because more so so i i have tested several things i mean whether they migrate to 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 oecd high income countries more or whatsoever and i i didn't find any effects and then i do find an effect on this this uh with interacting it with the pre-existing stock of migrants in 2005 which i found quite interesting but i think this is something we can do a bit more about yeah and I guess also in terms of the model, the question would be whether you could have, whether you have incomes in different destinations, the model per se, um, so wh whether that changes so that there's information about the betas in different countries and the, and the returns that people would have. But yeah, nice, yeah. nice paper though. Yeah, Thanks. yeah I, I mean, one, one ultimate limitation that we run into is that basically comparing, you know, the priors and the information on the internet changes a lot so basically i mean we, we cannot observe what people think about what would be potential earnings in the usa before internet and whether they update those beliefs by seeing whatever information whether it will be it results on google searches or social media that's a, always a bit of a black box i mean it would be interesting to to maybe see something in in i mean survey evidence maybe where people are asked about opportunities abroad and how these change as a function of 3G coverage, that would be very interesting if people, if that, yeah. Yajna, please, please go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering on the mechanism as well. So you put a lot of emphasis on the information channel. What about um, the communication channel? So the fact that there's more uh, widespread uh, internet access might also mean that, you know, if you're moving to another country, the distance between the two countries communication wise yep. is reduced. So you might think, you know, like I'm going abroad, but I will have a contact with my family. Yes, I, I think I was maybe a bit inaccurate on, on this, this stating this. Um, so basically, I think at, the, the, sir, at this current point, I think it's very hard uh, what we have to, to distinguish between a decrease in information acquisition costs and decrease in actual migration costs, as you indicated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the only only thing that you could could argue is that at, at this point there is a bit of there is no evidence that that mobile internet and also internet access that it actually increases actual migration. So I mean, this might hint at an information channel because decreasing migration costs in whatever model, how you want to write it down, have only one prediction. Basically, migration becomes easier and more people migrate. So I, I, I have to say that I believe that the most important thing is an information channel. Um, I'm not sure how, whether we can, we can when test this and get at this, but I think that would be very interesting addition that if we can get to that. 
yeah, maybe playing on the, you know, the destination country of preference, if you move further away, you know, like you're, you're more likely to go, you're more willing to move further than closer countries because Yes, I, I think that this is also interesting. I think there is people in trade literature that look at broadband internet expansion on, on, on firm level, and they basically actually find that uh, people move, to, uh, trade flows between closer destination become bigger because people are more aware of all opportunities, and then they just choose the opportunity which has the lowest trade costs. So I, I, I think this, this, yeah, in this kind of sense, there must be interesting things we can do with this. Of course, trade data is a million times better than migration data, but yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Luca, if you don't mind. So I will close today's um, seminar and then we can keep on discussing. So for those who would like to discuss a little bit more uh, about the paper, please stay uh, here.